Welcome to this, the second in the series of videos on how to generate random data for a database. My name's Andy Wicks, and in this video we're going to use the plan that we created in the previous video. However, whilst that plan was excellent, it left out one minor detail. The largest number of records that can be generated by freegeneratedata.com is 1000. So what I've done here is taken that figure as my highest figure. The table that had the highest number of records was title category, and that had 3,500 records planned for it. Since that can now only be a 1,000, I've divided everything by roughly 3.5, 3 or 3.5, to get to these figures here. The exception, as you'll remember, is the category table, which is being used separately in the next video. I've also added a column that shows the number of many links in each table. As you can see, the first three tables have no links, no many links whatsoever. Then we've got one and two, and I'll show you how to cope with the linked data when we get to the generate data format. So, let's move on to the website. Ah, the excitement is palpable. First thing we're going to do is to log in. Now, logging in is free, but there is a little hitch. This is the beta version. And so, the only item that works properly at the moment is Twitter. So, I'm going to authorise that to look at my Twitter account, which it wants to look there is free that is fine by me and now I'm going to create a new template I'm going to select from the drop down menu the SQL type because that's the sort of data I want to create now the first thing it asks is for the target country and language and you have a huge choice here you can select from English United States or English United States I thought about this for a long time and I decided to go for English United States. The database type to which I'd like to export the data in the end is MySQL. You have the choice of Oracle, Postgre or SQL Server as well, but I'm going to be using MySQL. So now we can come down and start creating tables. What we're going to do is to add uh, the first table as an item. Now we don't want to call it my table. That, the first item in our plan, is author. So that's what we're going to enter. And author now has 200 records. So I'm going to change that to 200. I'm going to save and close. And I've changed the name of the table from my table to author. The next thing I want to do is to add in extra columns. So I'm going to click the plus button here and explain which columns I want. Well the first column type I want is author ID and that is a number. But it's a special kind of number. It's a numeric identifier, so don't go for number here. Go for numeric identifier. That makes each record a separate number. Yes, I want it to start at 1. And yes, I do have extra columns that I need to add. So now I'm going to type in first name. And it asks for the data type. Now there are lots of different data types and you can see one of these is for people and it's a first name. So I'm going to click on first name and what I'd like is for the first letter to be capitalised. You have to do this for every text field by the way. Every text field that you want the first letter capitalised. So now we save and we go to a next column. The next column is last name, and that is 
is going to be a last name. Yes, I want it capitalised. And now I've finished entering fields for this table, so I'm going to save and close. Now the next table that I want to add uh, is the publisher table, and that has a few interesting bits in it. So I'm going to show you that uh, as we go. Name of the table is publisher, and I only want 10 records in this one. So I'm going to save and close. I'm going to add a new column and obviously the first column is going to be Publisher ID. I choose the numeric identifier because I want a unique number and yes I do want to add another column and now we get to something a little more interesting. In the Publisher table I want to enter the Publisher the name of the publisher itself. So, publisher, and I'm going to go down to commerce, and it's going to enter a company name. Now, we may end up with something that's not appropriate for uh, a publishing company, but that's fine. This is just test data that we're using to check whether our SQL later on works. Now I've finished entering the data for that, so company name can be auto-generated as well. Now I'm going to add the next one table, which is seller details. And seller details should have 15 records. So 15, save and close. Now I can start to add fields to this. Right, the first field obviously is going to be the seller details ID. And that again is going to be numeric identifier starting at 1. Now I want to add another column. Seller details, the first item is seller name. And I'm going to assume that I'm buying it from an individual for the sake of this. So I can choose full name. Again, I've got to capitalise. And first name, last name, yep. So even if I'm dealing with a company, it's going to say who in that company I bought it from. Now the next bit is the seller type. And this gets to be a little more interesting because here what I want to do is I want to create my own list of values from which it should choose. So I go to list of values and it asks me to enter these. So I'm going to have private sales, oops not privet, I'm going to have people who just walk into the shop I'm going to have auctions and I'm going to have house clearance. These are the types of sellers who come in to my shop. So I'm going to save and add another column and it will randomly select from one of those four for each one. Now I can have address and I can scroll down to address and I want full address. Again I'm going to capitalize and add a final column. The final column is email so their email address. I just go down to people and choose email. 
Use only disposable services. I have no idea what that means, but it's fine by me whether we do or don't. So I'm going to save and close. And now I've got my seller details in. The next table I'm going to add has one of those foreign keys. And that's where things get a little more interesting. So we're going to do the first of those. And then I'm going to leave you to enter all the other tables. The first table that has a foreign key in it is the purchase table. And the purchase table has 30 records, as far as I'm concerned. So there's 30. Oops. Now I want to start adding fields. Well, obviously, the first field is purchase ID. It always is. And we're going to add take numeric identifier, save and add column. But the next one is a foreign key. The foreign key comes from the seller details table. So there's a seller details ID. And here what I'm going to do is select number. This can't be numeric identifier because the number of records in the purchase table is going to be greater than in the seller details table. You remember that the seller details table only had 15 records. So I'm going to choose number and the number should lie between 1 and 15. No decimal. No, I don't want a decimal point. Now I can save and add another column and it will randomly select a number between 1 and 15 for the seller details ID. That means that my foreign key is now entered and that is really useful. It's really useful because every record now will contain a valid ID and that's why we have to create the tables in this order. If we know the order in which we need to create the tables, the foreign keys will be set up correctly because we know how many records there are in each table. Now, in date bought. And there, I'm just going to get it to select a date. But again, there's a little wrinkle. Nothing nasty. But I just need to select a sensible set of dates. Well, let's suppose it's 2001. January 2001 is when this bookshop opened. So now I'm going to have 2017. The month at the moment is 10, and it's the 5th of October. So now I'm going to add that. And the final one I want to add is price paid. That is going to be of type currency. And, yeah, some people will give us a book for free. Some people will say, no, I, I want uh, you to buy the books. So let's say we pay a maximum of £10 for something that's really useful. I do want decimal places. In fact, I want two decimal places because this is money. So now I can save and this... Uh, table completely and I have the first four tables entered for my data generation. Let's suppose that I've entered all the tables. As I said I'm going to leave it to you to generate all the other tables. You now know how to add foreign keys. All I do is hit save and it asks me for a template name. I'm going to choose second hand bookshop because this is the table for the second-hand bookshop example. I hit save, and that's now generated. Because I logged in, I can now go back to my templates, and should I want to restart, I just click on second-hand bookshop, and I can continue working from exactly where I started. 
I hope you found this useful. In the next video, I'm going to show you what to do with the data that it generates. Thank you.